Hey besties, thank you for tuning in to a Vibe Called Blessed podcast where we turn up for Jesus and celebrate in our confidence. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much for tuning in to the podcast. Yes, we are back for Jonah part two. And the reason why I cut my episode short the last time is just because I like to keep my episodes kind of short, not too long, just, just long enough for everybody yeah (laughs) it's just my personal preference but i wanted to come back and talk about jonah if you are not familiar with jonah you 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 gotta listen to part part one we're we're moving on to part two right all right so we're continuing continuing on and moving forward so we know that um jonah was inside this great fish for three days this great well for three days and he fasted and prayed and he got out and he did the will of the lord Right. And, you know, oh, man. I was just reflecting, I think, on the last episode of just just saying, you know, how we can think think of so many situations where God can use a bad situation to help us to identify our calling. So. For instance, there are some people out there, they are called to a women's ministry or a men's ministry, or they're called to children's ministry. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that ministry stops. It's only within the church, you know, um, or you are are for outreach. Um, It it doesn't mean just within the church. It can, it can mean, I mean, obviously outreach, the mission goes beyond the four walls i'm gonna continue to say that i don't even understand why people think that their work stops within the church if jesus was out and about in the streets why do you think that it's gonna be anything it's gonna be the opposite for us you know i just i don't know (laughs) and so the reason why i said god can use a bad situation to help people identify their calling is because think about your testimony and story you know slowly as you be, you immerse yourself and you build your relationship with God he will start to open up your eyes uh to things that so when someone prophesies or tells you something that God has said about you it should be confirmation because you should be reaching out to God in regards to your identity and who you are and in wanting to discover who you are now not to say that you're not going to experience some things that happens that tries to deter you from the things that you're doing, but the mission will not change. The, you still have to complete the mission. That that's the that's the number one thing that another takeaway that we can take away from Jonah is that the mission still has to happen. Like he tried to run from what initially God told him to do, but he tried, and guess what? full circle moment he came back around and still did what it is that he's supposed to do i think a lot of people feel it's unqualified now not everyone is supposed to have certain titles in church you know i it just i I understand you can just go get that stuff online and people are just calling themselves whatever but that's a whole nother thing but and there's just certain gifts that it's just everyone's measure of anointing is different and everyone has different gifts. But it's very important that you have self-awareness of what your gifts are and who you are and who God has commissioned you to be. It's very important that we get we find that because the same way that he's going to reveal to you, it's not going to be so far off from who who you are like honestly you guys like I'm a person to where I'm I'm very to myself very reserved I don't do a lot of talking I'm not the person that wants to be the center of attention I I'm not fighting for power I would be gladly be in the back serving God like I'm I'm they what they be talking about what you do (laughs) behind closed doors will be rewarded like I am like I don't want anyone to know (laughs) you know I'm very much like I I want God to get all the praise all the glory all the honor you don't have to tell me I'm great at anything was did God speak through me 
listen, to God be the glory. And so because of that, of just wanting to just reserve myself and just be in the background, I missed the part of like, yeah, but you're missing what you are conditioned and put on this earth to do, which is to spread the gospel. Now, how it's done, there's so many ways that you can do this. Not everyone is is going to make it on a big platform stage. And that shouldn't even just be your aspiration to be, I need to be on a big stage to feel, you know what I'm saying, appreciated or, you know, I, I'm sure it is, it is a, a wonderful feeling to be like, wow, you know, God put me on these big stages. Now, you know, where I was speaking to only 20, 30, 100 people. Now I'm speaking to tens and thousands of people in a room. And then um, the amount of people that are streaming, I understand that is all great, but don't let the platform become bigger than God. That to me, I always, God, keep me humble. Continue to keep me in a humble spirit. I, I don't ever want to forget where I came from. I don't ever want to lose that drive. I don't ever want to lose sight because I'm getting distracted by things because I, I, all of a sudden I have this sense of entitlement. Mm-mm, no, I. you already know God don't like idols. So, you know what I'm saying? So I, it's just, I'm just really iffy, but I wanted to be so in the back. I was forgetting that You wanting to hide and just be in the back, right? Okay. But what are you doing when you're in the back? Why? What is the reason? And I'm not talking about being in the front. Oh, you want to be in the front row or you wanting to be up in the pool pit. I'm not talking about that. But why don't you want to be on the front line in the army of the Lord? (laughs) Why don't you want to do that? Like you love God. You love Jesus. Do you believe Jesus died for your sins? Do you believe the word in the Bible is true? Was choosing God the best decision of your life? Do you thank him for being saved? Do you feel that other people should want to experience his love and know more about him? Okay. So what are you doing from your part to aid in that? And helping someone lead them to Christ. You can't run. You you can't run. You can't hide. Oh, it's, I, I'm not comfortable. I, I don't. Now get it. Not everyone is supposed to be up in the pulpit preaching and, and teaching to the people that not everyone that's not that's not everyone's thing, you know, because sometimes people can get up there and they have a spirit on there putting on the show and the, it can really it can really mess some things up and they're not supposed to be up there but we're not talking about that like let like let's take these four walls of the church away and just think in general of the world what are you doing the best thing that god can do is take you outside of what you consider your comfort zone is you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable it seems uncomfortable, but you never notice things about yourself and it just comes natural to you. Like I put off doing my podcast for a really long time because I just felt like, why would people want to listen to me? But to anything that I have to say, you know, like measuring, I don't, I wasn't really measuring myself against other people, just, just measuring my own self and being my own worst critic. But God, I, but God has a funny way of putting a of putting a, a a stop to your own thinking of you running from your own self because really you're not in the house running in circles physically running from yourself so you know it's not like you're Jonah getting on the ship running away from what God told you to do but <laughs> I was reading this book and it was really just saying, just talking about, it was, uh, it was about understanding your purpose, finding your purpose. And 
it was it was oh my gosh I have to get you guys the title of this book but it was just saying it it was like we make the things that God tells us to do we make it challenging on ourselves we make it seem so far-fetched and not from us why you never know the thing is you you ever try something you like you never know if you're gonna be good at something or if you like something until you try it or you ever done something like for instance you can you can use the instance of uh sketching or drawing or cartoonist these people didn't know that they was good at like sketching and drawing until they put that pencil to their paper and they tried it and then they were like oh I'm actually good at this I'm not as bad as I thought it is but guess what I'm going to continue to do this because I'm a natural at it and I enjoy it and I want to continue doing it and so I can get better at it and so what we feel is so unnatural to us it's actually very natural And what I was talking about in regards to me is that I didn't know what to call it. Like, I naturally want to help people just because I know what it feels like to want help. And not that it's not necessarily that it wasn't people around me that could not help me, but help me in a way that would help me to understand or my learning style because you know everyone learns a little bit different and the way it's the same way as like everyone preaches differently well some people may do certain mannerisms and scrawls or how they do things it's it's different like my apostle he is he can scrawl he yell he you know he's very animated and then you think of joel osteen and he's just calm and how he talks and how he's free it's like complete certain things are like the complete opposite but the message is still the same it's still teaching about preaching about salvation about god helping to lead the people so it's the the mission still has to get done So for me, I reading that book, I had to come to realization of like, I have gifts inside myself where I think that I, I don't see it for myself, but I've been able to walk in it and it's been, it's felt so natural. Do you, will you get nervous at times? Yeah. But that's when you ask the Holy Spirit to take over and to allow what you're about to do. It, it, it don't show you allow God to take over and to lead you to do what it is that he conditioned you. That's why you need to, you need to fast and pray. And you need to study to show yourself approved because it's going to show, you know, and at the end of the day, my love for God is greater than my doubt. Like it, it, it gets to a point to where you have to like, you you already know you're not qualified, right? Because that's, you know, we feel guilty for sinning, but we thank Jesus for dying for us. You, you're never going to fully feel, you're never going to feel worthy just because you're just like, God, I did so much and you still love me. And we're still making mistakes, even being saved. They may not be as big as they were before we got saved, but we're still making mistakes because we're human and we're in this flesh and we're in this world, Right? But it was like, you love God so much. Why would you not want to share that with people? We want, I'm I'm trying to tell you, I, I can't stress this enough. We have so much expectation. We want so much from God, but we ain't, we, we, we barely giving 10%. Barely giving 10%. The most beautiful thing I heard, and I could have threw my phone. I was watching someone's live, and and he said, he said, 
the le- hard lesson I had to learn was when I gave God a yes, I don't have, I don't get the choice to dictate of how things go when I gave him my yes. And when I say, I know something like, wait, what, wait, what? He says, when I gave God a yes, I don't get to dictate what comes after. And I gave him that yes. Mm-hmm. You're like, wait a minute, what? I could have threw my phone because you got to think about it. When you give God a yes, you got already know. You you need to know the devil is, wait, he like, really? I didn't take you out in this last season? Oh, that, that didn't get you deterred from God? Are you kidding me? Because you know he, Satan's job is to kill, steal, cheat, lie, destroy. Everything to to strip you and pull you away from God because he know God is real clearly he was an angel that fell from heaven he knows God right but he's so angry he's so bitter but we we don't got time for him okay we don't have time so clearly you see what he's trying to do he's he knows God is great and amazing he's seen the things that God has done for people he knows that the the blessings of God, that God is going to give to people so what, what are you gonna do what are, gonna, what are you trying to do? He's trying to deter you. So, of course, you got to understand the devil don't torment anybody that he already has control over. If you ain't in warfare, you ain't doing you ain't doing nothing. He, he, clearly, you're playing house. I'm sorry. You're just not. And it's not to deter or scare anyone to be like, oh, my goodness, I don't. But you got to understand what was I, I often think about. What was so great in the world? Like when I was, I still experienced heartbreak, people lying to me, anxiety. Like what was so great over there? But on this side, I get to, even if it's not even just things that God is doing in my life, I get to see it in other people. I get to see the change in other people. I get to see miracles God is not only doing in my life, but in other people firsthand. You hear about it, but seeing it, hearing it, seeing it walk in, people throwing their canes down, getting off of drugs, like just a transformation, that butterfly coming out of that cocoon, like just to get the first hand of witnessing God it is a different type of thing that you don't ever want to go back to a life where you didn't know him. So I thank God for the detour for stopping me in my tracks to stopping me from running. I wouldn't, before I say I wasn't even running, but when I got, when I sort of got saved, I wasn't fully saved. I was running. When I first came back to church, I wasn't fully there because the enemy will play in your mind to make it seem like you still can have the bet the quote unquote best of both worlds and you really you can't you you really can't a, a conviction will come over you now you if, if you don't have a conviction yet and you still teetering in both worlds you know that's between you and god and, it, and eventually that conviction is going to come that's going to change your that changes you to be all the way 100% from God and you don't want to run you know are you gonna have moments where you you gonna become Jonah where you like you know what this is too much I'm just forget it all and I don't want to deal with it because it's too much yes but the thing that is so beautiful is that God gives you a a, a reminder that even in this You're still going to come back to him. You can't even quit if you want to quit. You just, you, you want to quit. You get, you try, but you can't outrun God. The mission will, is going to be completed. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's going to be completed. And the, the beautiful thing is that, like I said, is, is being able to see what comes after that because you were obedient. This is what God does. I don't even care if God doesn't, if if of my obedience, if he does something for me, if if he does it in my DNA, I'm I'm happy. Because you got to think about it. There's so many things that God says, because your obedience, death was blocked from your family. You like, listen, 
they're waking up out of the hospital because of this or you know it doesn't have to be materialistic things like thank you god or god's like i changed the circumstances you're like thank you but if you was in the world and you didn't have a relationship with god think think about how that what that feels like feeling so alone and uncertainty and unsure and are there going to be things moments where you're going to have some uncertainties and and be unsure about some things yes but this time around you have a relationship with the the creator hello i don't know about you but i'm trying to have a 411 and not the, the hotline the the plumb line okay i'm i'm trying to be me and god okay so close he already know where i'm coming he's like all right god you know today have that relationship in that bond have that relationship in that bond and you know, are you a Jonah right now? Are you in your Jonah season? Are you, what is making you run? Jonah had his own reasons of why he ran. What is yours? Why are you running? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it frustration? Have you just given up? Depression, anxiety, you just don't want to do it. You just want to be disobedient. You and your disobedience here. You know, what is, the, and at what cost of you running are you willing to take? At what cost? At what cost are you, are you willing to, to offer up to God for running? You don't want to give up nothing. I bet you don't. I bet you don't. I know you don't. So why are we running? That's the question, right? But you see, you have two ways you can either stop running from God on your own or God is going to make it to where you can't run and you have you ain't you have to rely solely on him and now when he spares and saves your life all you want it to do is to rely solely on him it's a every day it is a choice to be saved every day I make the choice to rely solely on God. Can I sit there and portray and pretend to get what I want from people? I could, but I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Now, some people can sleep peacefully, but I just can't have that on my conscience and I can't have that on my heart. I got too much at stake in my life. It goes beyond me. There's there, it just goes beyond me. My life, God has woken me up today and, and spared me for a greater purpose. Well, that is all the time that we have. Thank you for tuning in to part two. <laughs> I hope that you have surely truly enjoyed the episode and like i always say don't forget to hit that replay 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 and send this episode to somebody else you know that may need to hear this and until next episode bye bye <laughs>